Welcome to the Police Accountability Podcast. Brought to you by CopBlock.org. CopBlock is a decentralized project supported by a diverse group of individuals united by their shared goals of police accountability, education of individual rights, and the sharing of effective tactics to utilize while filming police. From sunny Phoenix, Arizona, this is the Police Accountability Report, brought to you by CopBlock. A Colorado Sheriff Department has endangered the lives of witnesses and informants. By failing to properly secure an online database, the phone numbers, addresses, and social security numbers of many people have been exposed to not only criminals with violent intentions, but also to identity thieves. With nearly 200,000 identities exposed, the breach is of a massive scale. The Sheriff Department has contacted the FBI and Google to help determine who has accessed the data. Mesa Sheriff Department spokesperson Jessica Peterson said the file was stored on an insecure server since April but was not accessed until October. In total, 25 computers accessed the file. The file was left open to the world via search on the Google website. Many confidential informants that make plea deals when arrested for drug possession are now put at risk. Serious thought needs to be placed on completely changing the way prosecutions in this country are undertaken. The failed war on drugs categorizes many nonviolent members of the population as criminals and then offers them a way out of jail by snitching on their suppliers. The police are supposed to be there to protect and serve their communities, but it has been ruled time and time again that police actually have no duty whatsoever to actually protect someone. This is another story that contributes to the long list of reasons to never call the cops, never talk to cops, and never trust what a cop tells you because they are permitted by law to lie to you. In Metro Nashville, Tennessee, police supervisors are now warning some officers that if they don't find more people to arrest, they could be in trouble themselves. The officers affected by these statements are a specialized DUI unit tasked with running DUI dragnets to catch as many people as possible to extort money from them with the court system. News Channel 5 conducted an investigation and were able to uncover internal memos showing that DUI arrests had actually dropped significantly in the last year. Rather than celebrating the fact that there are less drunk drivers on the road, Police Brass has decided to ramp up DUI checkpoints and hold their own officers accountable for arresting more people. An example of the outcome from this new directive was the unlawful detention and arrest of Martin Bills. Bills was stopped in a DUI dragnet and repeatedly asked if he had been drinking alcohol or smoking marijuana. Bills stated that he hadn't done any of those things. The police officer had Bills perform the roadside parlor tricks that are passed off as a legitimate way to detect sobriety. Bills claimed he passed the test with ease, but the officer still arrested him because his eye was twitching and his leg was shaking. Both of these side effects are common when someone is put into a stressful situation. Prior to booking, Bills voluntarily submitted to a blood test. While we believe the blood test should not be required to prove your innocence, this situation helped Bills immensely. The blood test came back negative for all drugs. Bill states that he was arrested for being sober. With the local law enforcement jurisdictions feeling the budget crunch, more incidents like this are bound to surface. Earlier this week, I ran into former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson. In 1999, while he was still in office, Johnson came out in favor of ending marijuana prohibition. Johnson has recently been touring the country and speaking to crowds about limited government and ending the war on drugs, and is currently considering a run for president in 2012. I was able to get an interview with Gary after he gave a keynote speech on Bill of Rights Day at the Wrigley Mansion in Phoenix, Arizona. If if drugs were legalized, uh, how would the role of police change? Oh, I think think the world would become a much better place overnight uh, because uh, police, law enforcement, would actually go out and enforce real crimes as opposed to crime that is uh, victimless and uh, nonviolent. Do you subscribe to the uh, no victim, no crime mentality? Well, uh, no victim, no crime. Yes, I think I do. I I do. Uh, And again, uh, um, arguably the only harm done by an individual smoking marijuana is to him or herself. That's all for this edition of the Police Accountability Report. This is Nick Searsha signing off. Remember to keep it right here on LRN.FM for more liberty-oriented programming.